Birgit, glad you're here. Larissa, what's happening? All right. Hi, Sasha. Hi, Hi, Anna. Hi Frank. Welcome. Hi, Steve. Hi, Kelly. Welcome. Solange, you can't hear me yet, I don't think. Some people are still trying to connect. Hey, Elizabeth, welcome. So what do you think? Is OK? What do you think? Shall we? Yeah. You want to start or you want me to? Oh, no, you're good. You're good. You start. We're going to be doing a little sort of ice, not ice, we're a little time right now while people are starting to uh, still come on board. OK. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching on to freedom land. Ain't gonna let no racism turn me around, no, turn me around, no, turn me around. Ain't gonna let no racism turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching on to freedom land. Any other singers on here want to take us to another verse? Don't be shy. You can turn your screen off if you want, but come on, bring your voice in. We have to create community. <laughs> Who wants to take a try? Okay, Miguel, I guess it's you. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. I want to impress, not depress. Uh, <laughs> so there's another song you sing. Um, what's the one I just mentioned earlier today? Um, you who believe in freedom cannot rest. Woo! We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Come on now. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Woo! Me, young people come first. They have the courage where we fail. Think about those young people. I can but shed some light as they carry us through the gale. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Woo! Amen. Glide is a celebrating community, a singing community. So even if you feel like you sound croaky, your voice is welcome. Even if you feel like you sing a little off key, your voice is welcome. And if you just absolutely don't want to sing and be heard, you can always turn your microphone off and sing along. And then that way you're joining us in spirit and you're helping the whole community. That's an energy thing. You lift the energy by doing that. So I just wanna encourage you without browbeating you. <laughs> We're gonna get this program started in a little bit. So we're so grateful that you're here joining us on this incredible evening to celebrate an incredible individual. So thank you so much for being here. Hold on tight, because you're going to be in for a ride, a good ride, a right? Good ride. That's how we do it at Glide. A freedom ride. All soul. Bring your whole soul into this, because that's what it's going to take to change the world, right? 
Yes. Yes, amen. Take our souls, collective souls, to do this. Yeah. You know, you got another good one, Isoke? Okay? Who woke up this morning with my mind set on freedom? Oh, woke up this morning with my mind set on freedom. Woke up this morning with my mind. My mind is stayed on freedom. Hallelujah. 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 Walking and talking with my mind. Clap, everybody. Stayed on freedom. Oh, walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on freedom, walking and talking with my mind. My mind is stayed on freedom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ain't no harm to keep your mind. Stayed on freedom, oh, ain't no harm to keep your mind. Stayed on freedom, ain't no harm to keep your mind. My mind is stayed on freedom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to walk. Walk, I'm gonna talk, talk, I'm gonna stay on freedom. I'm gonna walk, walk, I'm gonna talk, talk, I'm gonna stay on freedom. I'm gonna walk, walk, I'm gonna talk, talk, I'm gonna stay on freedom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, 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 he's okay. That's us. That's us. Can you feel that place inside? Yeah. It was beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. Just going to wait for Janice and Cecil to hop on, and then let's get this party started, everybody. Michael. While we're waiting, uh, let's see. Wonder if there's something. Anybody want to bring a, a blessing to the group? Get us, get us started with a blessing. Anybody here up for that? You don't have to be clergy to offer a blessing. You could, as Rabbi says, you should be blessing, doing at least a hundred blessings a day. Think of that. Think of that. Think about how your day would go if you were doing a hundred blessings a day. Go ahead, Solange. Solange, go ahead. Then I'm gonna keep my blessings. I just I want everybody to keep your minds open and your hearts open to love. Because love is the only way. Keep your mind without fight. And the only way is love. Use your words if you need to, but do not fight. And uh, I, I want us all to be mindful and aware of all the people around you and share your love with them. Even if you're walking by somebody with your mask on, you can do it with your head. But it's so important to just keep our minds open and share the love that we learn at Glide, which is our conditioning and con uh, unconditional love. Love yourselves and share the love that you have yourselves with everyone you countered in your life. This is, I wish and I pray to open everybody's heart and keep shining because we need to shine, keep our lights on. 
That's the only way we'll change the world. Keep your lights on. Amen. Amen. Woo. And as we say it, Glide, amen. Amen. Shay. Right on. I know. Namaste. Salon, <laughs> salam, right on. Ashe. Ashe, yeah. Thank you. All right. So we are going to get started. Um, everyone, my name is Miguel Bustos, and I'm the director for the Center for Social Justice at Glide. And I just, on behalf of our team, just want to welcome you uh, to this short period of time for us to get to know who Dr. Martin Luther King was and how his legacy continues to fill our lives today. And we hope that by your experience these next hour and 15 minutes, that you get a sense about what Glide is all about and how we're here to support you to be the best you can and be a part of our community here at Glide. Um, so we're gonna start off actually with a little film clip. And so if I could have Amro from our team uh, cue this up, but we, we're so thankful for all of you for being here and please stay tuned for more events that will be happening throughout the year. Next month is Black History Month, and so we have a, a we're planning a really good programming for all of you. So, uh, thank you for being here, and take it away, Amro. I know you're asking today, how long will it take? I know you're asking today, how long will it take? Somebody's asking, how long will prejudice blind the visions of men? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, yes, sir. however frustrating the hour, it will not be long no, because truth crushed earth will rise again. Yes, sir. How long, not long, yes, sir. because no lie can live forever. Yes, sir. How long? Not long. How long? Yes, because you shall reap what you sow. Yes, sir. How long? How not long. long. How long? Do forever on the scaffold, wrong yes, forever on the throne. Yes, sir. Yet that scaffold sways the future. Yes, Behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. How long? Not long. Because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Yes, sir. How long? Not, not, long. not long. Because mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Yes, sir. He's trampling out the village oh, sir. where the grapes of wrath are stored. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. Yes, sir. His truth is marching on. Yes, sir. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is tipping out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. That's oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. That's Glory, hallelujah. We see we have some more folks and thank you so much for joining us. Um, now I'll turn it over to uh, Michael and Isoke. Um, we'll do the exercise before we get to, to Cecil and Janet. Oh wait, actually, there they go. Our guests of honor are connecting and um, Cecil and Janice. Got your video on Cecil? Jan, there you go. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. Wow. So Can you hear us? Yep. Yep. Perfect timing. Um, perfect timing, huh? 
Perfect time. And like always, Reverend Williams, um, <laughs> we just, uh, uh, just so that you know, we just finished seeing a clip of Dr. Martin Luther King giving his speech, how long and not long. And um, it really fits into your presentation today. So ladies and gentlemen, I have the, the wonderful honor. You know, I always say I run the Center for Social Justice, but Cecil and Jan were the Center for Social Justice uh, for so long at Glide and continue to shape uh, the work we do at Glide and specifically around racial and social justice. You know, Reverend Williams came to San Francisco in 1963 at a moment when the world was, was in an upheaval around so many rights that were being violated against women, against people of color, against transgender folks. And he and Janice decided that they were gonna do something about it. And they created an organization that has forever changed the landscape of what unconditional love and radical inclusivity truly, truly means. So we're gonna have a little dialogue with uh, Cecil, Reverend Williams and Janice Mirkatani, who's one of San Francisco's poet laureates, by Thank the you. way, um, and who has written several books. So you all gotta check their books out. Um, but it really is a treat to, to have you here and, and to know that you know, you're gonna impart some wisdoms on, on us, uh, especially during these, these incredible times. Um, the first question I have for you is, especially you, Cecil, when you decided to go to seminary, when did you first hear or meet Dr. King and hear his message? When did that happen for you? Surprise, surprise. What happened is that he came to San Francisco and he was on a quick trip, invited by East Hills pastor at that particular time. And he uh, came to Easter Hill Church, Methodist Church, and I got a hand to, to, to at least move as fast as possible to get over to greet him. I was very delighted to meet him, but he was not the Martin Luther King that we saw just a few weeks later. He was the king though, and emerging rather rapidly. And so he did it. He came to San Francisco, went to, to the East Hill Methodist Church, and I had an opportunity to, to shake his hand. It was only after about a year that I began to relate to him. But it was, it was some time before I got to really begin to know him. So I'm thrilled. I was thrilled. I was so thrilled about meeting Martin Luther King. And he had very, I knew he was gonna be something, but my God, I never expected him to do what he did and go where he did and what he did with the communities of the world. Hmm. So you actually got to meet him and hear him and feel his presence before he was the great Dr. King that we all know the world knows today. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he let me know it also after about a year, you know, when I saw him another time. He, he said, yeah, you're that fellow at, at that church. That's what they call Glide, all of them, that church. You know, yeah, you, that church, and that church. And that church was emerging also, but nothing like Martin, of course. Wow. Wow. Now, so you, you come to San Francisco to run that church and um, you and Janice founded a glide that was radically different than it was when you first got there. And yes. very different, right, Janice? Yeah, very different. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How different? Yeah, and well, I would not call it exactly inclusive when Cecil arrived. They were very, very, there was like 30 members or congregation members and they did not like it at all that an African-American minister was coming to be the minister of Glide. So he had to work very hard through all of that racism and rejection 
And, um, you know, they eventually left, but then thousands of other people came in because of his message of radical inclusivity, unconditional love and acceptance. Which was really Martin Luther King's uh, notion and emerging positions, being different, being radical. Mm. Being radical means that you step into something that that is where human communities are put down, and you get at the crux crux of the problem. You get down where the people are loaded and where they are working, and where they are sometimes many times working. But you know that this is quite different because. People don't want you around. They don't want you working to be, to eliminate a problem. They want you to come in and create more problems. And therefore, when you do, it puts you in a position of saying, "Look what I'm doing. I am making something out, and I'm making it count." And so we make things count, and that's exactly what was happening when we came in. And it works. It worked. Yeah, it worked. Now, I cannot think of another civil rights leader, figure, icon in this city of San Francisco that is like you. You you came in. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Right? You, You came in at a time when there was unrest, similar to what we're finding ourselves in today. But you came in at a time in the 60s, and you and Janice, um, were bold and you were unapologetic, which you've taught us all that to be, be unapologetic about doing what's right. But your message was also not only about doing what's right, but doing it with love. Doing it with love in a way of peace and nonviolence, right? right? So what, how, how did you first start doing that and how were you received by that? Because a lot of people were angry in those early days. But, yeah, yet, yeah. but you stuck by it and you kept emphasizing love. You kept emphasizing nonviolence. You kept emphasizing being together. What, what, what was it like during those early days? Two major things that you said that we have promoted that belong to King. And one was nonviolence, where we were. We, been nonviolent, and secondly, radical love. You put radical love and nonviolence together, and you got King. That was King's promotion. That was King's direction. That was King's uh, affirmation. That was King's direction. And we took that and we made it work. Uh, it was not always good. It was no, not always profitable. It was certainly not all good with a lot of people who were trying to get us not to continue what we were doing. But we went right on in SPAC. In fact, we just said, we're going to do it, and that's it. And it was not easy. It was not easy at all, was it? Well, what I recall from... um, the actions and, I mean, you know, radical love and justice require action and organizing. And I think Cecil learned a great deal from that. And I did too from Dr. King, is that you have to take action, you have to organize, you have to really um, gather the people who are being affected. And of course, throughout the country, African-Americans were being absolutely uh, brutalized, you know, murdered, lynched in a worse sense of the term in our prisons. Um, and, and Cecil, I, I think, was the person who was able, to, because of his charisma, um, able to bring people together behind a cause, uh, whether it was segregated busing, whether it was unequal education, whether it was um, you know, poverty, uh, you know, whether it was brutalizing and searching uh, African Americans, whether it was, I mean, and it extended to the gay community and transgender community also. I mean, it wasn't just about African Americans, it was 
the principle of injustice to one is injustice to all. And Cecil had the ability to bring people together, whether no matter what color, no matter what, behind a cause. And I think that that's what um, Dr. King inspired in many, many African-American leaders at that time. And Cecil was quite unique in his ability to cross boundaries with, you know, the police commission, you know, the, the board of education, the planning commission, you know, the people who were making decisions about housing, et cetera. So, I mean, Cecil was a true leader in that sense. And I think Dr. King was a great model. Um, and I'm not speaking for you. I'm just saying what I have observed. No, but you can speak for me. <laughs> That's right. As long as I don't, as long as it's complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, it was very admirable. And I was inspired by both King and Cecil's um, enacting in San Francisco and in the Bay Area and even nationally enacting those principles. Yeah, for instance, uh, that, uh, that great march in Washington, uh, I was present for that. Uh, I was present for uh, all the major marches because I made a commitment to be where the action was. And I was going to make sure that I carried that out with others who were also working to bring about change. See, the, the earlier writers and the word there were the people who were working at that particular time in the civil rights also were those who were expounding very strongly the kind of love that had spread because of King and James Lawson and because of a number of young... Young. Andrew Young. Andrew Young, yeah. And uh, what was that? Laurie. Joseph Laurie. Joseph Laurie. Laurie. Of, yeah, there was just a, a number of young men and women at that particular time who took up the, the issues that were critical and they were those who emerged as leaders from one community to another community. And so it was great leadership, frankly speaking, along with uh, those who practiced uh, Nonviolence and those who practice uh, unconditional love, radical love. Uh, and there was a thing about us. We felt that we made a commitment to change the soul of America. And that was the content of what the early civil rights leaders took as a means of moving things. Then we had decided that we were going to change the soul of America. And in changing the soul, we'll be changing the soul of all America. And one America, one kind of America, would not would not be against another group of, of writers and poetry and marchers and people who were genuinely concerned, genuinely concerned about who was going to lead or who was going to not going to lead. We accepted the fact. And Martin King, I'm sure, was one of the most potent, one of the most committed, one of the most daring, one of the most legal-minded people who had leaders who felt strongly that he could take the message and make it work. When he decided to make it work, it worked. And he just kept moving. And we moved with him. There's no doubt about it. Martin Luther King it was without it now. One of the most potent, one of the most committed, one of the most strong and courageous leaders that we've ever had in our history. I want to jump in here and say something about Coretta Scott King, because I think that she is a very, very strong woman. That you know, even though she's known to have, you know, fought for the Martin Luther King birthday celebration, that that was no small task. It was also no small task to be to walk beside this man, not behind him, beside him on all of the marches and all of the issues that she believed in also. 
In fact, we met Coretta, we became very close friends with Coretta. And Coretta said to me one day, and I'll never forget it. She said, I know what you're going through, Janice. <laughs> because she had faced many, many, you know, I mean, she had faced many sleepless nights in regards to Martin's, Martin King's um, activities and struggles and fear for his life. And she, when she said that to me straight on, eye to eye, eyeball to eyeball, it really struck me. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was really some, some good times and bad times uh, as we tried to change the soul of America. Good times and bad times, and it worked. Uh, I'm so glad that we have had the opportunity to touch the lives of people who had some uh, some commitment to change society, to change the world. Uh, I like changing the world very much so. And, and you Martin, have. Martin, Martin was, was, was the leader that took us and, and, and helped us to move in that direction, changing the world, changing the soul of America. It was there and it worked, I tell you. It was not an easy task at all, none at all. But we tried to make sure that our children and our children's children would have a better relationship because they had worked in a better world. And that world said, you can do it. You got to march so, and you got to talk, and you got to walk, and you got to live sometimes in situations that are difficult and hard and and they are frightening and they, they're going to comprehend your your response to do something magnificent and, and that's what King was about King was about changing the world and getting to poor people and and his theology which is labeled with nonviolence uh, he was the man he he had the plan. He had the direction. He had he had the the, the vim and vitality. And I think the most important thing is that he never gave up. Always, always, always leading and giving those people, those of us who were trying to make things happen, that 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 he helped us to help ourselves to grow and to make sure that we made it count. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you certainly, you did it. And I, I know you did it with, with a Dr. King's message and call, but there's a lot of it was already in you. It was already in you, Reverend Williams. Huh? When, when, when you came to Glide and most people don't know that before Stonewall in New York, there were the Compton riots in San Francisco three years prior to Stonewall. And when transgender sisters were being beaten and harassed, it was Reverend Williams who went down and said no. And he That's, true. That's, yeah. true. That's right. Well, and I, I just want to say this very quickly that what's happening today in regards to the people who stormed and created violence and took over the capital or tried to take over the capital recently that i have seen those faces you have seen those faces he cecil has seen those faces we have seen those faces through the decades those faces of hate those faces of absolute inhumane disregard for any kind of decency or um any kind of ethical caring or kindness toward humanity, that those faces that jeered and those faces that were so extreme, King talks about that too. He says, I have seen the faces of hatred and we have seen those faces of hatred through our history. Mine as a Japanese American, you all as African Americans, Latin Amer Latinx people, I mean, we have Jewish people, we have all seen those faces of hatred. We see them in the South, but we also see them here at home. And we can't allow that to happen. We have to say, 
as Dr. King said, nonviolence. You have to stick with nonviolence. And guess what? You have to stick with love because only love will overcome hate. That's right. That's right. Well, there was a, a story that I think Reverend Williams, you, you preached about one time about folks with SWAT, SWAT stickers on their foreheads. That's right. Who came to Glide. That's right. You or yeah. Janet want to share that story with, with, with the, the folks? Because probably a lot of folks hadn't heard of that story. Yeah. Well, uh, on a Sunday morning, uh, one, one Sunday, we were surprised when four people came in Clyde with swastikas stingers on their forehead. And they were there to intimidate. They were there to try to break us down. They were there trying to get us to respond in a violent way. They were there trying to test Glide, to test the people of Glide, to see whether or not they could stand it or they could put it up and, and break us down. And some of the people in the, in the Glide congregation decided that they were not gonna be nonviolent. So they started throwing these four people and we stopped it very quickly and said, look, we're here at Glide, we love you, we love you. And I'm telling you, that was very difficult for it to be nonviolent and have a swastika, a swastika on your, your forehead. It was very difficult to hold back, but that's what we had practiced. That's what we had committed ourselves to do, to love no matter what the circumstances and to make sure that all of us as a group of folks really became the beloved community, if at all possible. We kept looking. And, and after the celebration, they left. They were back the next Sunday. For four Sundays, they were there confronting. In the fourth Sunday. Fourth Sunday. Fourth Sunday. They changed. They came back. And the fourth Sunday, they had made a decision not to come in blind anymore. With the swastika. With the swastika. And they were saying to us, you all are really loving people. It's not easy for us to put up with you, but we are going to go and stand this test together. And that's what they did. They got those swastikas over their head, forehead, and they came and we all celebrated together. And it was quite a coming oh, home. It is amazing. Yeah. And they started volunteering. That's right. They started <laughs> serving the people. Right. I mean, you talk about transformation. That's pretty miraculous. That's well, right. you know, you, you, you both have exemplified Dr. King's message, um, but you both have in your own right have shown all of us what it means to love. Um, we find ourselves, and this will be the last question, um, but we find ourselves at a time where, where there's a lot of division and hate. And what message would you share with all of us during this time of uncertainty, a time of, uh, of division within our country? What message or pep talk or some, something you can give us to be able to, to move on on a new day tomorrow as it comes? Well, as I said, you know, I've been reading over the, me the messages by Dr. King, and he says that he sticks by nonviolence because you can't, you can't murder a hater. You can murder a hater, but you can't murder the hate. So nonviolence, with nonviolence and love is the only way to, to, to overcome uh, this particular kind of hatred. You can't change the person, but you can change the circumstances. You can change by modeling yourself. Um, I believe that we need a bridge. And I think each one of us should see ourselves as a bridge, a bridge to bring us closer together, to take the risk, to reach out to one another, and to go beyond the gnarling teeth. I mean, I've seen this face. You've seen this face. And they, we, you know, King talks about 
being hosed by water. You cannot, you cannot drown the fire of justice. You cannot meet darkness. You cannot get rid of darkness with darkness. You can only get rid of the darkness with light and, and love. That's my message. I mean, that's my th feeling. Then what we got to do, Janice, is reach out, always reaching out to those who are suffering severely. Absolutely. We've got to reach out you to people it. that we don't like, that we don't want around, that we don't want to, to talk to them, we don't want to be around them. We've got to reach out and get to people, no matter who they are. And their humanity. They, and, yeah, and their humanity. We've got to reach out for their humanity so they can be human. And we're all trying to be human, but we're not making it very well because things cut us off, you see. We become a thing person rather than a loving person. And what we must do, says King, is, as he would say, uh, as my words, if I am speaking to you, my brothers and my sisters, tell everybody that I'm going to be okay. Tell them that I will understand uh, uh, everything by and by. Tell them that I will, will make sure that I've done everything I possibly could do. And now I want you to know that I'm now talking about going to the promised land. So King has opened up a door for us to be positive and loving and daring and caring and standing with the promised people in the promised land. And what more can we say except amen. 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 Wow. Wow. What a, what a treat and what a blessing it is to hear from both of you. Thank you. Thank you for having Cecil, who is one of the few, probably a rare living person who knew Dr. King. He's walking history, actually. And thank you for having me. Well, no, both of you continue to influence us. Um, every day at the Center for the Social Justice, Center for Social Justice, every day at Glide, um, you know, you're, you're, you, you've modeled. And so we only hope to be able to do a quarter uh, of, of what you've done. And, and you just don't know how much you, how much you mean to all of us, both of you. And to have you here tonight um, is, is such a blessing all of us. You have people who are on this Zoom from all over the country. Oh, and, uh, your message of hope, and your message of love uh, continues to resonate through, through all of us. And so, um, ladies and gentlemen, you know, clap if you can. Show the, show the, the Reverend Williams and Janice Mercatani some love uh, because they, they totally deserve it. And uh, we look forward um, to next year to be together. Um, most of you don't may not know, but Reverend Williams actually started the Martin Luther King Day March and Freedom uh, uh, Ride from San Jose to, to San Francisco, and then they marched to City Hall. We're going to continue to do that next year when we can be together. So Janice and Cecil, we're going to, we'll, we'll, you'll be part of that for sure. Um, yeah, let me just say this real quick, that, that Coretta Scott King asked Cecil to be the chair of the Northern California Martin Luther King Birthday Committee. And he chaired that for over 20 years. Wow. And also we wanna thank you, Miguel, and Rabbi Lizak, and all of your wonderful staff for creating, for doing the work that you're doing for the Center for Social Justice. Thank you. Well, you are an inspiration for sure. Thank you so much. Um, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna to go to the next phase. Um, with Isoke Fime, who's our maven of transformational learning, and our rabbi, Michael Lezak. Thank you so much, Miguel. Um, thank you to Reverend Cecil Williams, to Janice Mirakatani for the deep, deep wisdom you share with us. I, I love that you close out with this image of pointing us towards a promised land and the language that you sowed throughout your talk of changing or reshaping the soul of America. And I'm just like grasping that and thinking that that is, we are building on that legacy in such powerful ways that I think all of us through the Center for Social Justice 
connect on on the, on the deepest soulful level. And I think about the connective tissue between um, radical unconditional love of self and how that is connected to radical unconditional love of other and how we have to do be doing work on ourself to be uh, opening up our hearts to, to work with others. And Isoke, I wanna, would love to hear your thoughts on that. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so kind of full right now, just hearing from Janice and Cecil and the reminder, whenever I hear that reminder of how they handled the swastika, that feels like a story that the whole nation, that the whole world should hear. This, this story about not succumbing Right, not giving in to the pull of the lower self. Right. Because I'm sure that the lower self was there, right? And, uh, but not giving into it, holding out, holding out for something more. And then that happening. It's just, to me, it's, it's such an inspiring story. Um, and I think we all have that capacity. We all have it. Uh, it's going to take some reaching. We have to reach down deep for it. Not everyone, not everyone, but some of us have to reach down deep to find that level of commitment, to find that level of courage to stick with love mm -hmm. under all circumstances. Yeah, so I'm just, um, I'm just really moved and uh, yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, and one thing that we hope to be able to do tonight is to we're gonna take us out of the large group. There's a, lot, a mighty group of folks who have assembled and to break us up into four or five subgroups to think in those small groups and what, what qualities do we associate with or aspire to uh, that Dr. King held? Which ones are we embodying right now? Which ones might we be aspiring to? So momentarily, Hannah Van Alston from, from the Center for Social Justice is gonna break us up. And uh, the groups, if I just, Confirm it's going to be me, Isoke, Miguel, Barbara, and there's one more, yes? And, Eric. Eric, me, and Eric's yeah. going to be leading the fifth group. And we'd love to, uh, ho our hope in these small groups that we will come with open hearts and open souls and thinking both about an American promised land, what does that look like? And to think about uh, Dr. King and all the qualities he embodied and which ones we want to embody ourselves. Welcome back, everyone. Let's just hear, let's do a little bit of a harvest here. Um, uh, hear from a handful of people, a word or two about how your group was, how that was for you to do that. I'll go. Um, I thought it was a, a powerful sharing. It was lovely to hear other people's voices and to realize how much they reflected um, how I felt about different uh, aspects of Dr. King. And then I saw new aspects that I hadn't considered. Uh, and it was lovely to be in a small group and lovely to be led by you. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Couple more. Yeah, I think that this this experience shows us how we're all linked by our respect and even love for Martin Luther King Jr. And when we start talking about him together, we, we realize how the values that he embodied are values that all of us share. And this this gathering brings us all together through through that through that shared respect for him and for everything that he represented. Yeah. Don't be shy now, especially my group. We had some good, good stuff. R Rochelle, uh, you're, on mute. you're on mute, Rochelle. You're going to say something? There you go. No, I wanted to hear Naomi's. She was going at it. She was great. You never finished. Oh. You were so good. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So what, besides the first question that was given to us, um, what I was saying is that what inspired, what inspired me to not only learn about um, Martha, Martha Luther King Jr. in 
like while I was attending school, but also I could, for me, I thought every time I hear his name or just hear about his, um, about the holiday is I see myself as the person, as Dr. King, because like I was saying in my group, um, for me, I've done many, not, a, not everyone on this call knows me or, or the way um, most folks know me, but what inspired, I see myself as Dr. King because I've taken myself out and about to be in the street, in the streets and defend something, okay. not for myself, but also for my, uh, my community, which is the Latino community. And something that we were, that um, the quality, like I have a lot of qualities, I, a, lot, a lot of the qualities that um, I've seen or I wish I could have, or something that I was uh, um, sharing that before we got back together on, to the group was that I used to be shy. I used to be shy to talk in public, to reach, to even talk in front of the board of, for me, um, it was scary to talk in front of like a whole room of like city hall. Even going in there, I didn't never, I never thought I was going to be able to talk in front of a, in front of eleven supervisors. But what inspired me was that something inside of me said, "Noemi, you gotta learn how to speak in public." So something that that. I feel like that is a quality that I have, that to speak in public, yes, it could be nervous, nervousness, but as a person of color and a person of, that has a learning disability or learning difference, I've stepped out of that comfort zone. So that's something that I wanted to share in my group and to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Naomi. Uh, thank you, thank you. Beautiful. What a gift to think yeah. about the inner profit there, Naomi, yeah. and to to get the cholesterol out of the system and to just let it flow and just to be a channel, which you're clearly rising into. And what a gift for all of us in this room to, to see and feel. Thank you. Keep Anybody going. Anybody else? I, I want to share um, in, in, in our session um, this is Mariana. Hola, Miguel. <laughs> and um, one of the things that uh, we, we discussed was that with all the white supremacy going on, the first reaction that I have is to um, respond with mean words or, or something that hurts. So I, um, I, I try to, I, I want to be like Dr. King in a way that the words I speak, even when I'm hurt, are healing words. Mm -hmm. Healing even when we are attacked, to be the better person to heal whoever is around us. So that's one of the things that I'm walking away with today. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Anyone else? So I want to um, just add something here, which is that uh, uh, in this group, um, there likely are people who are not in that space of love. And that it is really important when we talk about radical inclusivity and radical love, that we also embrace the parts of ourselves and the parts in each other that are like, screw that, I'm pissed off. I could, if you gave me a gun right now, I would be out in the street, right? Like, it, it doesn't mean that that person is not loving. It just means that that person is angry and hurt and isn't feeling hope at this moment necessarily. Um, and I just, I just wanna make sure that, I always wanna make sure that all the different kinds of voices inside of us are safe here, you know, that we, we, yes, we all aspire to love. Oh, I shouldn't even say that. I'm assuming we all aspire to love, but that there are times when we are stuck in something else and we need to be accepted in that place. And that that acceptance is what allows us to heal. 
not saying get rid of it. You have to get rid of that anger. You have to get rid of that bitterness. You have to get rid of that discouragement and that disgust that you feel. No, bring it in and we, and, and bring it in, bring it in so it can be loved too. Um, I just felt moved to say that because I was listening to a, another talk that he gave. If you all check this one out, it was sent to me. It was, um, I can't, I, you know, I'm sorry. I can't remember exactly what the context was, but he was, oh, it was the one where he's talking about the three evils, war, poverty, and racism. And in that speech, he says that for the first time in his career, which was a short-lived career, someone booed him and it was someone of his own group. So, you know, someone on his side booed him. I see you nodding, Aaron. Do you know this speech? Oh, you, you're, you're, you're muted, Aaron. I don't, I don't know this speech, but um, I was listening to some discussion today where it was brought up this kind of history that um, there were others in his circle that um, did not agree with his way of um, handling things. And I didn't know that someone would actually come out and boo like um, they did in the Congress. You lie! I can't imagine somebody would do that to Dr. King. But I, you're right though, um, there are disagreements within the family, the movement about how to effectuate change. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know this story, but I know yeah. the circumstances. Yeah, so he, at first he was crushed. He, you, if you find the speech, he'll, you know, you'll see it. It's, it's in the first five minutes of the speech. He said it kept him up that night. He, he just tossed and turned. He, it, it bothered him so much that this happened. And he said, but by the time he finished wrestling with himself, he understood that all of his promises, people were saying to him, you promised us that it was going to be better. And it's not better. We have turned the other cheek. We have done this. We have done that. And it's still bad. It's still, you know, as bad as ever. And he found compassion for that. That's the, that's the bottom line I wanted to share with you all, that he found understanding, empathy, and compassion for that, those people who were mad at him. And, um, I know I'm not trying to proselytize and I, I don't want to divide the group in any way, but it did remind me of the story of Jesus about, you know, how the disciples were mad at him because he didn't bring down empire. They thought he was going to actually end empire and he, that's not what he was talking about. So um, that came to mind just now. And I feel a little flush of uh, something like, oh, I hope I don't alienate people by sharing that. But um so I just wanted to say we at Glide, when we say radical inclusivity, we mean we want to include all the experience, the grief, the bitterness, the temp if temporary, I don't want to forgive anybody. I'm not going to forgive anybody. You forgive them if you want to. I'm not. We, we want to make sure that everybody in the community has room. So does that make sense? I'm looking, you know. Um, yeah, because that's what love has to do. It has, that, that's what I feel like I have to learn, continue to learn to include more and more of what doesn't feel like my position. I think it's the day by day invitation to keep the heart open. Yes. Which I think is a spiritual practice. Uh, all the more so after, after events like January 6th of how that it might close the mind, might close the heart, might close the soul of how do we stay open to the possibility? Of, of prophecy, of redemption, of hope, even in the midst of that. And I think uh, the terrorists win when we, when we crawl back under our bed. And our glide-like invitation is to say, like wake up the next morning and say, yeah, we got meals to feed, people to feed, <clears throat> hope to hold on to, and a vision of a promised land that, we, that no one can take away. 
you know, I want to just share Isoka and Michael to the group. One of the things, the best part of working at Glide um, is, is that, that notion of love and radical inclusivity. So when I go to work to, at Glide, the, the most, the coolest part is when I'm walking into the building and there'll be people lining up outside for a meals program. And often you'll have someone, that, you know, I always like to say, good morning, hello, how are you? As I'm walking into the building. And I remember one time this gentleman, um, I said, good morning. And he said, good morning. And he turned around and all of a sudden his face just lit up. And we're talking and all of a sudden, all the stuff that people, society says we have to put in front of us began to go away. How someone looks, how someone sounds, what they're wearing, or even what they smell like, it all went away as we were having this brief moment together. And can I tell you, I felt so free <clears throat> that I was able to just unleash all this stuff that people <clears throat> and society says, it all went away. And there's freedom in that. There's freedom in that unconditional love. There's freedom in being radically inclusive. And, then, and, for, and for all of you, we're with you. You may not be at Glide working or, or coming in every day, but you're part of this family. You're part of us. We're part of each other. And if you don't think you can make a difference, let me tell you, you can. And I think, I think that's what we learn at Glide, that each individual one of us can make a difference towards justice. Whether it be in our pods that we find ourselves in now, whether it's in our Zoom rooms that, that we also find ourselves, or in our friendships and in our families, on the block that we live on, you can make a difference and know that we at Glide know you can. And we love you for that, for the difference you make in this world. Um, Amro, how are we? We're good. Okay. So, um, Michael and Isoka, you want to take us home with this? So each of us in our small groups collected words. Uh, we invited participants, as you all know. Like when you think about Martin, what's one quality that stands out? We, ga we gathered this, uh, harnessed it, and, and, and channeled it to Amro. And uh, here it is. Uh, just take a minute to look. Uh, and see what words pop out for you. What image, uh, what, w when you think about this, what, what lands and what stays in your soul? Take one minute. Now this came from all of you in this community that we've created tonight for this special occasion. You all created this. And so you're gonna get an email uh, later this week. Um, we're gonna take this and put it in a PDF format with our Glide logo and you're gonna get this. And we hope that you print it out and we hope that you take it to your homes or your offices or wherever you like, even if you're an artist and it's in your studio. Um, take a look at this and remember that you're part of this community. So- and May I ask Amro, um, my groups uh, didn't get in there on time. So would you, were you, will you be able to incorporate them? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank yes, you, thank you. <laughs> 
Thank you. I want to um, think back to Reverend Cecil's words of of uh, summoning us to imagine the the American promised land and dreaming about changing the soul of this nation uh, and thinking about that heart that is was just pulsing on our screen uh, and how each of us makes up uh, um, you know, a web in the fabric that is America. And I think about where we see ourselves right now and where we aspire to be. Uh, tomorrow morning, next Wednesday morning after inauguration, please God. Uh, and um, to think about the America we dream of and how each of us is an agent of change on a living justice stage. And uh, we bring fire that you call it that you got from your parents, you call it from God or the Holy One that is alive in there that needs to be tended to, uh, needs to be fed and nourished. And, and, and it's not given to you for, for, for um, selfish reasons, but it's really to be shared with the world. And I think the, the work that is ahead of us in the coming weeks and months of reclaiming this dream, reclaiming King's dream and Reverend Cecil's dream and our the shared dream of all of us on the screen is to be harnessing our individual fire and belief. And maybe sometimes it's rage, but how does that help propel us towards that dream and to insist on the change and to push us through obstacles that we thought maybe we might not be able to get through? Thank, Thank you. you, Rabbi. Um, and if you are interested in Glide's approach to social justice education, um, please um, contact Hannah Van Alston, who's on, on here. Um, maybe, yeah, you could put, Hannah, maybe you could put your email address in the chat box um, and let her know that you're interested. We just started a group last night, so we'll, it, you'd probably have to wait for the next cycle, but um, that's one thing I want you to know. And then the last thing, um, I don't know, uh, Miguel and, and Eric, you were gonna close out, but I just wanted to end with song. So whenever you say, I will. Okay, so we're gonna uh, close out with Eric and then we'll go with the song. How's that? Beautiful. Eric. Great. Guys, that was beautiful. That heart really took my breath away. So it was a, a great envy. Um, as Glide's Community Engagement Manager and on behalf of the Center for Social Justice, um, I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. Um, I want to give a huge thank you to the Reverend Cecil Williams and Janice Merkuratani, our founders, uh, for joining us and sharing their insights into who Martin was in their lives. Um, my gratitude also goes to Isoke, Rabbi Michael, and Hannah from Glide for pulling this together, as well as the team from uh, Shake Technologies, Amro and Lewis and Luis, for all their help. Um, at Glide, we, we work hard every day to live Dr. King's dream. However, we can't do uh, we can't do it without all of you. So please look out for more racial and social justice events in the com uh, coming months. Uh, it has and will continue to take all of us to build that beloved community. Again, thank you for joining all of us tonight. It's okay. Okay. All yours. All right. Well, um, how about this? If you um. Turn off your mics, make sure you're muted, and then sing with me because this is one that we all know. And this is an invitation. Sing this to your inner self, your inner spirit. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. Oh, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And we would love it if one person would sing it and we'll all mute ourselves, just one brave soul, one brave soul. I'll sing it with you even, even though it's gonna be a little weird if I do. Just one. This 
little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Woo! Gorgeous. Woo! Hey, it's okay. Before we leave, we, we forgot to thank Barbara Lynn, who's also a Glide staffer, who's a very important part of our Glide family. Barbara, thank you so much for hosting uh, one of the facilitation groups. We really appreciate you very much. And dropping everything at last minute and saying yes, even yeah. though she didn't know exactly what we were asking. <laughs> thank Such you, Barbara. generosity. Thank you. And thank you, Miguel for leading us and uh, holding us together as Center for Social Justice. Amen. Thank you all for coming. So great to have you all with us. A peaceful night and a, and a good week filled with many blessings. Much love. Much love, team.